Can you use the more exotic time signatures or a mixture of different time signatures in GarageBand on your iPhone or your iPad? No, you can't. But like most things in GarageBand, there's some hacks and workarounds that can get you up and running if you do want to use some different time signatures or meters here in GarageBand. So let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today where I help you create, record and release your best music. And one of the questions I get asked more than any is, can I use 9, 8 time, 5, 4 time, something more exotic than the 3, 4, 4, 4 or 6, 8 time that we have in GarageBand? And as I mentioned, I didn't want to bury the lead. The short answer is no, but like most things, there's a way around it. So what I'm going to show you in this video is how we can use our drums to create our own metronome of whatever time signature we want. It does take a little bit of fiddling, but it can be Done. Let's drop, dive in and take a look now. So here I am in GarageBand on my iPhone and the exact same method can be used for the iPad. So you might be aware that to change our time signature, we tap in the top right corner on our little spanner icon. We scroll down and we tap on time signature. And now we can choose between three, four, six, eight, or our standard four, four time. But once we set that time signature, that is it. We now have that set for the whole song. We can't actually change it, but I'm gonna show you a few little tips and techniques here that we can actually use. So the first thing I'm gonna do is come in here to my sections. Now you'll notice here, I've got section A as 10 bars because what I want to show you first is how we can create a 5-4 beat. You can use this exact same method for any of your other exotic time signatures. I just happen to be on a bit of a Dave Brubeck uh, jaunt at the moment and here's some cool songs in uh, time signatures like 9-8 uh, and 5-4. So 5-4 is take 5, the do 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 So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So if I wanted to create a track like that, what I need to do is actually come in here I've got 10 bars here and I've got my drums enabled. So if I come out to my drums and a little bit loud there, let's just turn those suckers down a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to record a click track, but I'm going to not pay attention to where my bar markers are up the top here because they're not going to matter. You basically have to start ignoring those numbers for what bar you're in when you start doing this. And again, the reason I got 10 bars there is this is going to result in eight bars of five, four time. It'll make more sense once I've done it. So let's hit record and I'll record in this pattern. Okay, so I've done that and I've just done five bars because, again, you need that mathematical skill here because you need to work out at what point you basically come back onto your bar marker. So because it's 4-4, four, four, we're using 5-4. Five, our five bars here of 4-4 five, four, of four, four time are four bars of 5-4 time. Yes, as I said, there's going to be some calculations here. All we need to do now here is let's quantize this first of all to make sure that it's sitting on the grid. So we'll go to our track settings. We'll go to quantization. Yep, it's a straight note. We could even use an eighth note there just to make sure it's all sitting nicely. We'll tap again and we'll go loop. And now what we have is, let's just up the tempo a bit. I don't like it being so slow. Let's go tempo. Do, 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 do. Let's uh, pretend that we're going to play take five. So um, we'll turn off our metronome by tapping on the blue light there. And now when we hit play, So there you go. Now, if we wanted to, we could come in here and add any other instrument. And I won't try and play Dave Brubeck because that's not going to be easy to do here. But let's just turn the volume down on this one as well. Let's just pretend we're playing along with this and we'll hit record. And there you go. You can see that we're just using the drum track as our metronome and we can play along. Now, once again, your bar markers now mean diddly. So you don't, you can't use your bar markers to work out where you are. But again, if you divide them up like we did here so that your first five bars are now four bars and your next five bars are four bars, then you'll be good to go. And what you can then do, so this is where the next part of the question comes in. So say you've got your exotic time signature, but now you want to switch back to 4-4. And I actually use this in a song called The Tree, uh, which I will link a bit 
of a description where I show how I did this in a bit more detail, but you're probably ahead of me on this one. If we tap on the section button here in the top right corner, we can actually add a section. And this time, if we've got eight bars here, we'll leave the section B with eight bars and we can actually just record a 4-4 time. If we wanted this to go back to 4-4 time, let's just hit record and record a 4-4 time metronome here on our drums. And there you go. So we can go back to our track view here now. Now I only really needed one bar of that actually. And then we can tap it, we can loop it, and then we'll play this back with, well, we can leave the metronome on because it'll match, but we'll take it off. And that's all good. If we tap in the top right here on the little plus button to go back to our sections again, let's go to all sections here. And now let's just listen to the transition between these two different metronomes. So here we go from our five, four part. So you can see there that you've got the flexibility to create your own track. Now you do need to do a bit of planning. You need to work out how many bars of each different type of time signature you're going to have. And if you do want to change tempos, yeah, sorry, that is harder to do because we don't have any tempo change. So you would have to then completely ignore everything, get your own separate metronome, own click track, and then record to that. That's a topic for another day because that is a next level of difficult to do. Still possible, but a little bit more difficult. So there you go. I hope you found this useful. And if you have been wondering, can I use those exotic time signatures? Can I use multiple meters in the one project? Yes, you can, but it's not quite as simple as you might have hoped it was. If you've got any comments, questions, suggestions, or your own tips and ideas about how to do this sort of thing, then leave those in the comments below and I'll see you on the next video. Hey, thanks for sticking around. If you'd like to check out some more videos all about GarageBand here on iOS, there are two links right down below. You can also subscribe to the channel by clicking or tapping on the Studio Live Today link in the top right corner or head on over to studiolivetoday.com for even more audio goodness.